last in my class was uh, still using Integrity or Screencast-O-Matic? Okay, okay. All right, good deal. So you're familiar with that. I knew Jasmine was. Okay. <clears throat> Here is the syllabus, or at least, let's see if I can clean it up a little bit. There we go. Microsoft is just a sorry, sorry product. Okay. There, finally. Okay. All right. Uh, I didn't update this because I wasn't sure the class was going to make or not. So this hasn't been updated. But I'll try to fill in the blanks as we go. Okay. We are now fall 2017, not spring. And this will be good for the first mini term. The, the class doesn't change. However, my office hours change. So that's why I have a first and second mini. It is Math 227, which is Calculus 3, 4 credit hour course, and the times have changed a little bit. Monday, Wednesday, 12.15 to 1.55, right? That's what's on your schedule, right? No, no, no. The office hours change at many terms. The course is the same throughout the term, but the office hours change at many terms. That's why I put a first and second minute. If I remember to do such a mini term, I'll tell you about it. I may forget to change the syllabus. Okay? Uh, but it's a Monday, Wednesday, 1215 to 155 class. It meets here in this room, A building, uh, uh, Bessemer campus, this campus. My name is Charles Fowler. <clears throat> Here's my contact. Email is cfowler at lawsonstate.edu. Now, y'all have both been in classes before. Can I go through some of this just really quickly? Okay. Uh, one thing that may have changed since Nick, you had the class, uh, my phone on the, okay, let me back up. Email right now, I'm way behind on email because we had a week off and I was out of state and the, the place where we were, the wireless was terrible, okay, and very, very slow. And so I couldn't keep up with emails there. And then last week we were in meetings and various things, and I couldn't keep up with email very well either. So I'm pretty far behind in email. Phone, even worse, okay? Uh, so if you ever call me, 929-3449, try to call during my office hours. Now these are not the correct office hours, but when I get them corrected, try to call during the office hours. Also, if I'm not in the office, I obviously can't answer the phone, okay? And when I'm not in the office, I'm in class. So uh, so try to call when I'm in the office during the office hours, I'll tell you that. Now, this second number here, this is the one here on this campus. This number is the one on the Birmingham campus. Same prefix, 929 to 6409. And I'm there on Fridays only. But don't leave me voicemails there, okay? Don't leave me voicemails here. I'm so far behind in those, I don't know when I'll ever hear them. Just hang up and call back. This one about the same, because don't leave one there because that's not my phone. If somebody else uses that office Monday through Thursday, and I just am in there on Friday. So I can't access the voicemails there, and that lady won't know what to do with mine when you leave. So, so don't leave a message at this number at all. And that's where I am on Fridays. My office here on the Bachelor campus is in this building, A265. I thought you know where that is, right? Okay. Uh, on the Birmingham campus is the academic building, <coughs> B122. And are you familiar with Birmingham campus? I know you are. Are you? 
Okay. Uh, if you're anywhere, just ask where Dr. Pruitt's office is. He has a suite of offices uh, on the second floor there. And um, when you go in, you see a secretary's desk. The room behind her is a copy room. That's where I am on Fridays. Uh, his is a big corner office, of course, you know. And then there's a, a work room, but uh, I'm in the room, the copy room right behind Miss Saxon's desk. Okay, now I'll give you my office hours now. These are incorrect, but I'll give them to you. On Mondays and Wednesdays, I have an 8 o'clock Math 100 class full to the gill. In fact, we've added more students to it. Okay, I don't know where we'll put them all if they all show up. Okay, then from 9.30 until 11.10, I looks like I'll be teaching a Calculus 2 class with very few students because one of those students has to have it to keep on track, otherwise he's not going to be able to transfer next fall. So I'm offering that one with very small students. Okay, then I have, and this um, from 12.15 to, I'm sorry, 11.15 to 1.15, so that's almost right, I mean 12.15, 11.15 to 12.15, I'll be in my office usually eating lunch. I usually bring my lunch, I eat in the office so you can surely call me or Come see me then. Okay? Then I have this class at 12.15 till 1.55. And then I'm scheduled for a uh, differential equation course, which you're in. Are you in that too? You're not, are you? What's that? Linear algebra. That's tomorrow. Okay. The, uh, the, um, the differential equation class is supposed to be 2 to 3.15. Now, are you going to need that class too, or can that wait till spring? Uh, we'll try to have them both. Okay. Okay. Eight to nine. okay. Well, if, again, I think there's only two students in that class. Um, had it right here on top. Where did it go? Ah, here it is. It is on top. Uh, yeah, and I and both of you have paid, so uh, I don't mind running that. However, if you could wait till spring, we'll have a bigger class. So, will you be taking it in the spring, or do you not? In the spring, and probably those other people in Cal three will probably possibly take it in the spring. So, well, you're the people in Cal three. So. Uh, uh, there could be others, you know, taking it in the spring. So uh, it, it would just be for a bigger class rather than you being in two, two people classes, you know. Uh, so anyway, we'll see. If that runs, then I'll be in class from 2 to 3.15. If it doesn't run, then my office hours will start at 2 and go until 5.15. Except for today, okay? I'm supposed to be somewhere in Birmingham at 5 o'clock, so I'm going to have to leave here around 4.15 to 4.30, sometime like that, although I've got a, a meeting I'm supposed to have in Birmingham. But other than today, we'll be going to three uh, uh, classes. So the only thing wrong with this is 11.15 to 12.15 is my lunch hour, which I'll be in the office, and 3.15 to 5.15, if both of the classes make, that, I mean, if we run them, those will be my office hours at. If we don't need differential equations, we'll start at 2 again. Now, Tuesday and Thursday, I have a smack dab, full up Math 112 class at 8 o'clock, and then a decent sized uh, Math 113 class at 9 30. Then the, the linear algebra, which is, I didn't print the schedule, but I think it's pretty small too, that's at uh, 11 o'clock, right? Tuesday and Thursday. It goes until 12.15. And then at 1.15, I have a physical science class that starts, and it, it's got enough students to make. It's going to start at 1.15. It's a midterm class. It goes 1.15 to 3.45, and then the lab is 3.45 to 5.45. Then I'll be shutting things down and leaving campus about 6. So, uh, that's the only office hours I have on Tuesday, Thursday. If the uh, if we run the uh, linear algebra, 
then my only office hours would be 12 15 to 1 15 that's when i'll be eating lunch and then uh if the any hours he doesn't run then it will be 11 to 1 15. now when the second mini term starts the physical science 112 class won't start until 3 15 because the uh Automotive students are in class until three, and then they come out at three. Yeah, they get through at three. So I mean, yeah, and they'll come over here at three fifteen, and then everything gets pushed back two hours. So I have more hours uh, on office hours on DC thirty, and that's what will change in term. It's not this class, but the office hours will change. And then Fridays, I don't know. I'm put down here seven forty five until one. It may be eleven forty five. It may be twelve thirty. I I haven't worked out how late I'll be here on Fridays. But what I have to do, basically, Monday through Thursday, I've already got my 40 hours in, plus some. But, because I have a second mini term class that is an overload, then uh, I need to make up those hours, and I'll do some of them for first mini term and some second mini term. Okay, way more than you probably needed to know. Okay, here's the course description. Now, this is something that I did not write. No one here on this campus wrote. In fact, there was a committee of the public four-year colleges and universities and the two-year college system got together and they said, if we teach this, they will give you credit for it. Okay? This is, now I did make one change that I wasn't supposed to, but I think they made the change now too. When they first wrote this, they said, this is the third of T, T-E-E. -E not three. I knew that was supposed to be three, not T, so I put the HR in there. I think they changed that, so I think we're okay now. But it's a third of three courses in basic calculus sequence. Topics include vector functions, functions of two or more variables, partial derivatives, including applications, quadric surfaces, multiple integration, vector calculus, including Green's theorem, uh, curl and divergence theorem, surface integrals, and slope theorem. Okay? That is a lot, okay? Then combined with the fact that this past summer, we missed at least a week and a half with various things. The governor decided to give us, take away one of our Mondays, you know, around the 4th of July. I had a meeting I had signed up for on a Friday, Saturday, and the vice president changed it to Monday, Tuesday. I lost that one, and it seemed like there was one other that, uh, uh, meeting that we lost, so we didn't finish everything we needed to. We are going to start in chapter 11, which is uh, parametric equations. Uh, it's called uh, parametric equation, polar coordinates, and conic sections. We'll do just sort of a slideshow run through of chapter 11. And then, because of the way our book is organized, we'll do quadric surfaces for, well, We'll do vector functions. Wait, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, chapter 12. Uh, let me get the correct title for it. Is vector geometry. Okay. Uh, so we'll do a slideshow through that until we get down to quadric surfaces, and that's where this course actually begins. So we'll just do a slideshow for the rest of the chapter of what we're going to cover in 11, which will only be the rest of. 11, 1, 2, and a little bit, 3. Then we'll go to chapter 12 and just do a slideshow of it until we get to 12, 6, or 12, 7 quadrant surfaces. That's where the credit will start. And then from there, <coughs> it's easier to do it in the table of contents. So 11 will be, a, we'll finish 11, 1, do 11, 2, and a little bit of 11, 3. Then we'll do parts of 12, uh, and then the actual Cal 3 will begin with 12, 6, survey of quadric surfaces. And then uh, chapter 13 is vector value functions, so that's where it mentions here. Uh, topic includes vector functions, and okay, that's chapter 13. Um, Functions of two or more variables, that's chapter 14. Partial derivatives, that's also in chapter 14. 
quite, uh, I'm sorry, uh, multiple integration, that's chapter 15, vector calculus, uh, that's basically um, chapter 16 and 17. The, the basic part of vector calculus is 16, and then the part on Green's theorem, Stokes' theorem, and Divergence theorem is chapter 17. Okay? So, where we get all this done, I'm not sure. We'll do our best because we've got a lot to catch up for from last time uh, that we didn't get to cover, but I'll try to go through that quickly. Okay. Any questions on that? All right. Um, prerequisite is Math 126, Co-requisite 9. The textbook is this one. Now, is this the one we had when you were in it? Okay, it was the pr previous edition of this one, though. It's sort of a bluish kind of book, light blue. That's still good. Very, very little has changed. So you can still use that book. Did you have this one, Jasmine? Oh, yeah, okay, good. Okay, so that's still the text. Now, I just wanted to let you know something. The odds are you're not going to be able to sell this text back at the bookstore at the end of your sequence because starting this term, the Cal 1 students are in a different book. Um, and uh, next term, the Cal 2 students will be in the new book. And then the following in the summer, Cal 3 students will be in the new book. So uh, you are the you and the Cal 2 students are the last two classes that will use this book. So uh, the odds are the bookstore won't be buying them back. So if you got it, you can keep it or see if you can sell it online or something. Okay, uh, both of you have been in my classes before. Um, are you familiar with the blackboard paragraph? I make fun of it because it's way out of date, but they don't let me change it. Okay, the course student learning outcomes. Students will graph and classify quadrant surfaces. Now, we're not going to do that much graphing, but we'll show how to graph. Students will work with and perform calculus operations on vector functions, compute length, speed, curvature, and describe the motion in free space. Okay? And that, by the way, number one is the very end of, of chapter 12. Okay? Number two is chapter 13. Students will work with functions of several variables, compute limits, take partial derivatives, applying them to tangent planes, gradients, Direction derivatives, change of electrons, that chapter 14. Okay. Next is students will perform multiple integration techniques of apply uh, them. That's chapter 15. Okay. All right. Next, students will perform line and surface integrals um, of applying them to Green's theorem, Sykes' theorem, and Divergence theorem. That's chapter 16 and 17. Okay? Students will research and write on the topic in calculus. That's the writing competency like you had before. And uh, then the overall competency will be your final exam, which will probably be the last chapter test. That's how it usually ends up. Okay, any questions on that? Okay. Evaluation assessment, just like before, the research paper is required. It is not droppable. It counts as a test grade that cannot be dropped. And the very last test, whatever that is, cannot be dropped. Okay? And any test in between, I will drop the lowest if it helps your average. Okay? All right. Any questions on that? And then the breakdown of 90s or A's, 80s or B's, just like normal. Okay? Attendance. There's only two of you in here right now, so please try to be here every time. I'll uh, just let you know if you're not here and we are going to run the class, then I will record the class, class on uh, Screencast-O-Matic, upload it to YouTube. Uh, we can't afford to miss any days. So uh, even if you're not here, I will still teach it. Now, if I'm not here, we'll try to work something out from there. Okay, uh, make up work. All your stuff is going to be assigned and it's take-home stuff, so I'll do make up work for take-home stuff. Get it done, if you can, within the first week. That first, the, the research paper, just get it done as early as you can in the term. You know, get it done, get it knocked out of the way so you don't have to worry with it later. 
the rest of them, your tests. I encourage you to try to get those done within a week, but if you can't get it done within a week, you can have extra time, but I just don't want you still hanging on to test two when I've already given test three. So try to have it turned in before the next test comes around. The sooner the better, because if you get it turned in, I can get it back to you, and you can see what you may have missed so you don't make the same mistakes again on the next test. And if you haven't turned it in, there's no way I can do that. Okay, state law on discrimination and harassment. You've had that before. Any questions on that? Americans with Disabilities, this is not new with this syllabus, but it was new either last spring or I think it was last spring. Uh, so you saw it in the summer. Uh, it's just a little bit of new stuff about who the uh, contact people, their phone numbers, a few things may have changed there. There's a little bit on, the wording is different from what it was before. Now, I don't know how they did this, but they they have spacing differences between those two paragraphs, and I hate that. But I can't figure out, we had to copy these over, and I can't figure out how they're correct. So, uh, this thing on the, the office uh, locations, uh, Bessemer in Birmingham, those may be a few updates on that. I don't know. Now, this course calendar obviously was for last spring. I will update that for this uh, fall. I've got the update done already. I just have to copy and paste it in here. Okay? And then last is the uh, acknowledgement sheet. You can either copy, I mean, print this and give it to me, or you can. Uh, sign it electronically and send it to me electronically, after whichever you want to do. Any questions on the syllabus? Okay. Then I will get it updated, like I said. I won't know about tomorrow's classes until after tomorrow, and if everything holds as it is now, I have very, very, very few office hours. Uh, Wednesday afternoon, when I have two hours, that's going to be about the max all week long until Friday. So if I can't get it done Wednesday, I'll try to get it done Friday. Can't swear I will. If I don't, I'll work on it on the weekend. So uh, we'll see. Okay. No questions on the syllabus. Then. All right. Let's, let's save it. I did make a few changes. All right. Let's look at the research paper general instructions. And these haven't changed much. Just very minor changes from last summer and for Victor, whenever he was here last spring, whatever. Do we need to go over that anymore? Uh, I did have a question in my last class. Can we do the same paper? And the answer, of course, is no. Okay, so it is a different paper. Remember, I had to hang on to the papers. Okay. <laughs> That's not why, but I had to hang on to it because they periodically asked the staff to proceed at writing, but that gives me a good sort of check. Uh, but not that you would do that. All right, so no questions on that. Uh, I do want to point out one minor change is, and remind you, please, when you do submit your paper, attach a single page uh, from one of your sources. The other thing is, I think I went over what makes a full page of text. It's going to start. If you have a header, you don't have to, but if you do have a header and anything else and then the title and the triple space, and you start typing right there, one page of text is going to go to the bottom of that page and on the next piece of paper it's got to go down at least that far to be a page of text. So it's going to be a minimum of two pieces of paper, maybe more, but a minimum of two pieces of paper because you've got to come down that far okay, to be a page of text. And then the other thing is be sure to turn in a uh, page from one of your sources. I only need from one. I don't need from every source. I just need a single page. Now, the only other difference is this one. Okay? Uh, let me start from the back end. Our because this is for summer, it looks like. Uh, yes, it was. This was for summer. Uh, if you turn in the paper, 
in the month of December, you just get your score. If you turn it in the month of November, you get one bonus point. If you turn it in the during the month of October, two bonus points. And if you turn it in in the month of September, three bonus points. If you turn it in this month in August, and you all got two weeks to do that, if you turn it in in August, you get four bonus points. Okay, that's sort of carrot. Get them in early. The stick is if they're not in on time, you start losing points and on time means before the final exam week begins. The last day of class for this course, not the last day of finals, last day of class, which I think is the first Wednesday in December. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Yeah, I may have one more class today, so I'll hang on to this one. Okay. And the last thing then is my locator card. Let me see if I can find that. Here it is. Now this, at least according to what I know now, is up to date. Is what I don't know that I can't tell you anything about, um, obviously. And that is, well, let me go on to the Okay, it's for fall 2017, first mini term, folks. The physical science class changes second mini term, so that changes my office hours. Uh, but my name, the phone number, my email address, all that stays the same. Okay, then here's my schedule so far. On Monday and Wednesday, I know I've got this Math 100 class. It's a full class, in fact, overfilled. Okay, it goes from 8 to 9.15. Then at 9.30, it looks like I'm going to have to keep that Math 126. I asked them this morning if they could wait and do it in the spring. And one guy in particular said, no, you have to have Cal 2 in the fall, Cal 3 in the spring, and, and those other two you know, differential equations and many of that so you can't put it off. So we, I will be teaching that with very few students. Okay. My lunch for Monday was the nominally is 11:15 to 12:15. I had maybe half that time today because of all the stuff going on. Then this class, I guess, we'll make. Uh, we'll let it make with just two or three students. It'll be from 12:15 to 1:55 on Monday and Wednesday. And then we'll talk about the Math 238 and see if we, what we can do about that. That goes from 2, if it makes, we'll go from 2 to 3.15. But 3.15 starts my office advising. About all the time I have an office advising. And during the first four days, my only real time for office advising is uh, 3.15 to 5.15. Except today, today I go to leave early. But most Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay, so let's go to Tuesday and Thursday. And again, my uh, Math 112 class is overfilled. They just put some more students in it over lunch today. Uh, so I know that one's made big time. The Math 113, last time I checked, had like 17 students in it, so that's made big instead. The Math 237 tomorrow, I don't know. Uh, I haven't turned it to the List, but I, last time I checked, there was only one or two students. I don't know. You may be the only one, but there may be one or two more. If anyone's added it today, I haven't seen that. Okay. Then my lunch will be from 12:15 to 1:15, uh, and that's really the only time I'm in the office all day Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. Then physical science starts at 1:15 and goes until. 3.45 and 3.45, the lab starts and goes until 5.45. And then I usually have to shut down the lab and all that kind of stuff if I'm on campus at 6.47. Okay, now when the second mini term begins, this physical science becomes physical science 112, and it moves down here to 3.15. And that for it gives me more office hours on Tuesday and Thursday afternoon that I don't want. And that's what's going to fail in the syllabus if I remember to do it. Of course, that 
puts me here until uh, 7.45 or 8 o'clock, and there's going to be a lot of extra hours. Okay. And then on Friday, uh, this is listing from 7.45 until 11.45. My syllabus earlier said 1 o'clock. It's going to be somewhere in that time frame. I just don't, I haven't figured out how to balance the hours. Uh, hours out. So on Friday is most of the time on the Birmingham campus, uh, academic building, it's the B building, 122, Dr. Pruitt's office. Uh, and I, I put down lunch just over the required to put down lunch. I don't even have a full hour for that, just 45 minutes. But, like I said, most of the time I'll be there past that. Um, so, uh, I just went over the research paper and it'll be on YouTube and I went over the located part and I finished the syllabus too I think while you were out. Alright, any questions about my locator card? Where I'll be, when I'll be, whatever. Okay, since I may have another class today I'll leave that open and now we'll go to Oh, before we do that, need to hit safety. And I think both of you have been in my classes before. Did you hear the safety portion of those classes? Victor's saying yes. Were you here for the safety part? You weren't. Okay. Basically, just a real quick rehash. If it's a weather issue, something outside the building, you go low and in Syria. Okay. Tornadoes, severe thunderstorms, anything like that, go low and interior, okay? If it's something inside the building, like fire or chemical spill or something like that, you go low and outside the building. Basically, that parking lot down there between us and Ethel Hall. Uh, and the third one, what's the third one? Anyone remember? Active shooter. The active shooter, basically, turn off the lights, lock ourselves in, and get out of sight. Back here behind this uh, concrete wall, that's the place to be. Uh, I'll try to handle getting all the doors locked, okay? And uh, But if I get incapacitated and someone needs to do it, hopefully you remember how to do that. If not, I'll be yelling directions if I can, <laughs> okay? All right, any questions on any of those? If you want it, any of it reviewed, I'll be glad to do it. Yay or nay? No? Huh? Good? Okay. All right. So that's done now. So let's go to... No. This one. Oh, man. All right. All right. Now, are y'all okay with starting in chapter 11, or do you feel like you know that well enough and we can move on to 12? It's up to you. Huh? What's that? Okay. Well, because the class we did this summer, we didn't finish chapter 11, so I was going to go back and do that unless you did it on your own. Huh? I'm sorry. Okay, do you want to do the first of 12 or start at quadric surfaces? You can? Are you are you comfortable doing that too? No, no, quadric surfaces is the last part of 12. Okay, start at the first part of 12, but you don't you're okay with 11. Okay, Victor. See, I don't, I don't know. I can't remember where we were when you took Cal two. Okay. Well, if if you find that, so you're saying let's start at twelve. So let's go back. And we'll do chapter twelve. PowerPoint. All right. 
We'll start in section one. Okay, now if there's anything from 11 that you forgotten or is fuzzy or you want to go back and do, we can do that pretty easily. Okay, now, when Victor took the class, we were in the older edition. You had the newer edition. There's very few places they, they don't agree. Uh, if I find any of those, I will point them out to you. Okay, so we're going to start in chapter 12. Okay, let's get the slideshow set up from the current slide. All right. Now, your chapter 12... Uh, that's in your text. The first picture is a very different picture from this one. Um, but they both deal with uh, things you do with vector geometry. Uh, the one in the text is ferrofluids contain suspended magnetic nanoparticles. That means very, very tiny particles. Uh, when placed in magnetic field, they form peaks and valleys to minimize uh, the total energy of the system. Vectors and their cross products play a key role in understanding behavior of ferrofluids and magnetic fields. In fact, everything that has to do with magnetic, I want to say everything, just about everything that deals with magnetic fields, especially as related to electric fields and magnetic fields, cross products all over the place. That's one of the things we'll do with vector geometry. Now, what this one's talking about, this is the recently completed, or at least back when the previous edition was done, the Beiling or Baling River Bridge in China's Gizhou province. It's a 2.25 kilometer long bridge. That's um, not quite two miles long, which is a pretty long bridge, okay? Soaring 400 meters above the Baling or Beiling River, uh, 400 meters would be four football fields on top of each other, one, two, three, four, long ways. That's a pretty high bridge. The tension in its cables and the forces on its towers are described using vectors and vector calculus. So basically, the whole weight of this bridge is being supported by these towers here and those towers there. The Cabling in between is supporting it in between that, um, but they're what's holding all of that up. So you better have some pretty good foundations there to support it. And this is called a suspension bridge. Golden Gate Bridge is another suspension bridge. Not nearly as high as this one, though. Okay. All right. That's a little wow, gee whiz. Okay. Um, and what they say here, vectors play a role in nearly all areas of mag mathematics and applications. In physical settings, they're used to represent quantities that have both magnitude and direction, such as velocities, forces, accelerations, uh, new Newtonian mechanics, quantum physics, special and general relativity, all depend fundamentally on vectors. So that's why we're spending a chapter on vector geometry and later we'll do one on vector calculus. So they sound like similar titles. They interact, but they're not the same thing. So let's do some real quick review of what vectors are. This little statement there, uh, principles that have uh, magnitude and direction. Okay? Magnitude and direction. Uh, they also play a critical role in computer graphics, which is a big deal now. See, so you've got a cell phone there. If you have ever played a, a, a game on a cell phone, you know graphics are a big part of that. Vector, without vectors, you couldn't do that at all. They wouldn't be reasonable at all. Okay. Um, describing how light should be depict, depicted. Uh, providing means to change viewpoint on screen uh, appropriately. Have you seen those 
uh, computer things that you can look at every side, you know, and, and, and twist an object around, you know, incredible how they do that. And if, have any of you ever heard of CAT scans? That's computerized tomography or something like that, or something else in between that. A, I don't know what that was. Um, uh, MSR, magnetic spin resonance, uh, all these different kinds of uh, medical things they do. Uh, one time, well, actually it's happened you know, three times in my life, but one time, I think it was the second time it happened, I had what they call a heart flutter. It's not a fibrillation, it's a flutter. Not nearly as serious as a fibrillation, but it seems like I have one about once every 13 years, whether I need it or not. You know, I mean, it's very rare, uh, but after the second time I had one, I happened to tell my doctor about it next time I saw him that I had one, and he got all pat. he was a young doctor, got all sort of panicky about it and wanted me to do a stress test on a treadmill, so I did that. No problem at all. Except he thought he saw something right at the end that let's do a uh, angiogram, which basically is threading a camera or something up through your whole body. And my wife said, no way, that's way too intrusive for something that you're not having any problem with. So we went to UAB and uh, talked with them there, and the cardiologist said, but no, we'll just inject you with a, a radio isotope, and then we'll take, it was like CT or something, I, I don't know what they called it, and take pictures of your heart using the radioactive stuff, and we'll slice it and dice it, <laughs> you know, sounds scary, but you know, they do it by computer, and look and see how your heart muscles are responding. Again, I would be on the treadmill. So uh, they injected me, and I started on the treadmill, and they said, let us know when you think you can only go another minute. How would I know that? Either I can't go anymore or not. So I just was walking along. Well, you sh can you go another minute? I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. So I kept going. Finally, he said, okay, let's stop them. And uh, so they stopped. They increased the elevation, increased the speed. And it wasn't anything bad. So anyway, after a while, they said, okay, let's stop. And then they had me, I think, lie on the table for, it seemed like forever, but probably 45 minutes or an hour. And then they said, okay, it should be everything done. And all they did was do a few scans, and then the computer chopped them up, and then the cardiologist showed them to me and said, yep, this is perfect, that's perfect. Yeah, all you had was a heart flutter. It's not showing anything whatsoever. So. But it was amazing to see my heart cut this way and this way and that way. <laughs> you know, it could do it three dimensionally, you know, cut it every which way. And he said, yep, these are right what they should be, those are what they should be, those are what they should be. It was really pretty amazing to look at. That's vector geometry is what allows you to do that. Um, other fields like economic statistics, uh, they sometimes use vectors to encapsulate information in a manner that provides for efficient manipulation. Even though in economics you really don't need vectors and possibly in uh, statistics you would wonder why you did, but uh, actually it allows you to present the data the way you want it. So that's what this chapter is doing, developing the basic properties of geometric and algebraic properties of uh, vectors and the first part here, no calculus is required. These are just the concepts of a vector. So this is going to be old hat to you. Now, vector, Victor, you've had some physics, have you? Have you also? In high school. Oh, in high school, okay. Uh, you're taking this semester. You're going to run into vectors all the time there. So this will be uh, building on that or addition to that, you know. Now, here's a vector PQ. Now, when we name a vector, P is the initial point of the vector, Q is the terminal point of the vector, okay? So we always write it in the order 
initial trouble. So that would be PQ. If this arrow were going that way, that would be the vector QB. You always write the initial point at the tail end of the vector, just like it is here, and the uh, terminal point at the head of the vector, just like it is there. So that vector, where P is a point, now here's another thing that can be a little confusing. Try to keep it straight in your brain, okay? This is a point. P is a point. 2, 2 is, 2 is the x coordinate for that point, and 2 is the y coordinate for this point. This 2 is the x, that 2 is the y. Okay? Point Q, this again is a point. Q is a point, x coordinate 7, y coordinate 5. Okay? 7, 5. Now the vector PQ is a vector, not a point. It's also given as a 2 digit representation. We aren't there yet. We'll get there in a minute. But don't confuse points with vectors. Points are just a single spot on a coordinate plane and a vector is a directly lined point. Now, that is just any old vector PQ. They call this a position vector OR. Now, why do you reckon they use O rather than Q? I mean, than P. Any major reason? Let's start at the origin. The initial point P here was not the origin. Here it is. That's the point 0, 0. Okay? And the terminal point of this vector is R. There's no reason not to call it Q or anything else. But that's the point point 35. Now, since this is the origin, O, the origin, we never usually list that because you know it's 0, 0. And by the way, this can be extended to three dimensions. And Victor, you've had linear algebra, right? Oh, you have. Oh, you have differential equation. Wait. I'm not taking it. Oh, you haven't. Okay, I was thinking you were taking that. Okay. Uh, all right. The uh, I was going to say in linear algebra we let the dimensions go up forever, whereas I can't picture anything more than three space, three dimensions, four dimensions. I can't. I can't picture it, but I can deal with it. Okay. Now, this is no calculus involved here. Just stuff about vectors. Now, is all this old hat to you, or is this a good review? Yeah, both of them. This is what? It's happening. Okay, I'm hard of hearing. Okay, here's a vector V. Okay, and two other vectors there. Those two vectors are parallel to V. What do you mean? think they mean by that? They're heading in either the same direction or exactly the opposite direction. That's what it means to be parallel. Okay? You don't have to be pointing the same way, but the line segment itself has to be parallel with the original. Okay? Now, in the B part here, W is not just parallel to V, but is exactly the same magnitude as V. And it's pointing the same direction as V. So we call this a translation. It was here, it moved here. It could have moved here or here or here. As long as it has the same magnitude and the same direction, that's called a translate of V. We say those two vectors are equal to each other. Those are obviously not. Okay? Here's V, there's this other vector, this one's shorter. It can't be equal. Now this one appears to be shorter, but also in the opposite direction. That could not be equal. Even if they were the same length, they're in opposite directions. But these two have exactly the same length in exactly the same direction. They are translates of each other, so we say those two vectors are equal, even though they're located physically in different places. You know what's happening out there? 
the eclipse. It's already getting darker. Okay. And I hate to do this. I hate to miss class. But I've got some devices. We can go out and look at that if you want to and just pick up the rest of this next time. Okay. So that's called, do you want this to be all we do today? I hate to do it, but you only, this is the last time I'll see one of these in my lifetime. The next one's in 2045, and I don't think I'll be around then, or if I am, I probably am not going to be able to get out and look at it. Okay.